I wanted to um, just give you guys an idea of, um, and you know, a lot of you who were on the Sunday webinar, um, if you're members, um, you, you kind of have an idea of how I was coming into the week and uh, what I was looking for um, more than anything else. And you know, now that we got this little crack in, I'm not even going to say tech. Tech, a little bit more of the underbelly growth stuff. Um, some of the more more of the story names, right? Uh, we've been talking about that. A lot of these unprofitable, um, you know, based on the future, years to come, story, we saw an explosion in the EV stocks. Um, a lot of these stocks caught a bid and benefited off a rotation back into growth, right? Uh, that methodical, it was over the course of a couple months where finally players gave up not even completely, but slowly gave up on that reopening, got to be in value trade, can't touch growth no matter what you do. Finally capitulated on that thesis, and you could see the professional money especially um, really were scrambling over the last couple of weeks to get exposure into anything um, more speculative and on the growth side, okay? And it you know, it got to a head, right? It got out of control. Um, and, you know, it's hard. That's the problem with shorting these markets. You never know how much longer they can go before they run out of gas. But, you know, when you start seeing on the sentiment side, um, you know, some of the things we look at that scream to us, poor risk reward, that's where you really got to be a lot more prudent. Right, a lot more prudent, especially on any additional, you know, any new entries or new risk. And what I mean by that exactly is, I think you know, this pretty much was telling us a lot. Even though not everything falls into these categories anymore, I think that's the problem with this market. All right, uh, but if you remember, we looked at this, okay, and this was this is coming into today now, right? And you know, you had. Again, McElliott, if you looked at, um, I don't want to get too technical because that's where I lose some of you guys, but Charlie McElliott of Nomura had a, a really interesting note explaining exactly what we've been talking about, uh, uh, what ha what's what been going on the last few weeks in this market, okay? And in simple English, just you know, a lot of hedge funds, a lot of professional money came into, I would say, the last month with no exposure to the grossier names, and they basically just had to throw money and throw themselves uh, to, you know, revamp exposure numbers to as much as they can possibly get their hands on. Uh, and that's why you, you, we really saw this, uh, you know, exaggerated run up in, in a lot of these names uh, from the more speculative names, garbage names that really had no reason to rally. Um, alongside some of the quality stuff, right? That they had no exposure to. Uh, but if you look at this chart, again, this was coming into today. So you're probably gonna see some improvement uh, on this end here, okay? And what I was referring to earlier, semis these days, it's really hard to put every single chip stock into one pile, right? You got Nvidia, AMD, you got some of the growth um, semiconductors, chip plays, and then you have cyclicals, right? You have a lot of value cyclical type semiconductors like, um, you know, Micron is cyclical. Um, Texas Instruments is cyclical. Uh, so I know we spoke about, you know, we spoke about this enough over the last few months. Uh, but for some of you newcomers, uh, you know, again, this is just a bland sector breakdown to get an idea where sentiment's at, right? And as you can see, the last few weeks, you could see players have really, you know, ramped up their long exposure on the tech end, right, on the more growthier side of things. And at the same time, right, the stuff that they were really stubborn to get out of, right, they, they didn't want to, they didn't want to sell these financial names, they didn't want to sell these energy names, um, because they were all on the one side of the fence, the reopening side, right? The roaring 20s side, 
Uh, the economy is going to reopen. There's going to be no hiccups. Rates are going to shoot higher. And you got to own financials, commodities, and energy. Forget about growth. You want nothing to do with it. All right. So that was the mindset. And then what happens, you come into the fall and some of these tech growth names start to run away from you. And, you know, you start to see rates not creeping higher, right? They were actually going lower. You start to see the reopening now with the Delta variant and all these things. You start to see hiccups, right? It's never as smooth as you expected. So now money had to just, from being all on one side of the fence, had to go and start making up for loss of time and loss of exposure uh, and start to own these growth and tech names. And while they're doing that, they finally let go of you know, energy, financials, industrials, some of the stuff that they really didn't want to let go of for so long, stubborn, okay? Lo and behold, okay, you get extremes again. And this is not going to go away. This is just the market we're in. You throw in the machines, all right? Um, and the abundance of quants and algos out there that uh, just react to price action. And, you know, this is the market we're going to have, I think, there's no going back. You know, we're going to get extremes and we're going to get it quicker than we're used to seeing. Um, so what we had now and what we had going into basically this week, you had a pretty nice setup for rotation, right? Some profit taking out of tech and uh, growth stocks and go in, move back into cyclicals, financials, energy, stuff like that. Okay. Uh, so, that's what I was, a lot of us were looking for going into this week because the risk reward on a lot of these tech names, I mean, come on, you know, we spoke about this for, you know, the last couple of weeks now. Some of these names, they just, they've gone bananas. And you know, when you see a lot of people on Twitter trading the same big tech name, you know, just at higher levels, right? They, they made money, but they just, they want to keep buying the same name, but they're buying it higher than where they bought and sold it a week ago, right? And they just think it's an ATM machine that's just going to continue to spit out money because that's the way it appears, right? When you start to see that, usually those are signs that um, we're pretty close to some sort of move in the other direction, okay? And it doesn't have to be drastic, right? What we've seen now, I think what we've seen to this point Okay, you have some names that, that have overshot to the upside that can use a lot more breathing. Okay, but some of the larger tech names, okay, some of the names that didn't really go too parabolic, uh, I think you got already a lot of good by these names getting punched in the jaw because a lot of the hot money, as we spoke about, all the chase money was in short term weeklies. You understand? It wasn't that they were betting on the company. They were betting on the price action to continue, right? And especially the word melt up was getting thrown around a little too loosely, right? Everybody talking about it because of how the markets reacted of late. Um, you know, people thought these things would never have a, a downtick ever again. And what we've seen now, I think is at least enough. And you guys know me. Once these names go, I can't. It's like I'm lost in space. I can never really find that quality entry ever again once names explode to the upside. I'm just awful. I, I never get comfortable buying, you know, secondary entries at higher levels, okay? We can talk about that another time, but I just, I never get comfortable. Uh, but for those of you who like to trade these names, I think we're at a point where into weakness, if you see sweepers starting to get behind a name call side, you could start to trade these things on the tactical side again, okay? And I know, you know, you're like, oh, on the tactical side again. Yeah, because for me, you know, the risk reward in a lot of these things wasn't even worth trading intraday for Christ's sake. Forget about tactically, right? I mean, you had names that just um, you know, w went up in a straight line. Okay, TTD, yeah, the whole, everything we looked at. So now you got um, at, at the least a healthy breather here in what you needed to see 
okay? And I'll give you an example, okay? Let's say like, for example, um, like Apple today, right? Apple's a name, you know, you, you were looking to put, or you like to trade, whatever, the, whatever it may be. And you start to see weakness in Apple from this point, right? You had the reversal yesterday. Today, you had a little weakness. But for those of you around watching the flow, you could see, right? Buyers stepped in there, okay? And now you can play this thing into weakness or sweeper activity. And still, now you got to trade out of it. Okay, now you got to trade out of it. Um, and like I said, where it was prior to these last two days of selling, it, it wasn't even worth looking at, at that, okay? On the flip side, you know, the, the money where the, the better risk reward has been, right, is in anything uh, more on the, on the cyclical side, anything that money has been coming out of, all right? So you have banks, you have energy, um, you have industrials. Now, the problem with these names, they haven't, they just haven't caught the sweeper activity. They haven't been seeing the flow that the growth names have been seeing, right? And, and it feels like it will never come. But if it shows up, this is what we want to be ready for, okay? Especially into, into weakness. So I'll give you an example, right? You got JP Morgan, been rallying the last couple of days, Bank of America, the banks, right? You get some selling tomorrow, the next day, holiday selling, low liquidity, whatever it may be, okay? And you see some buying coming into these banks, that, that's where you want to own them, right? Because they're being sold with, with no due likelihood, off of some profit taking in tech. And, you know, these things have been acting completely different, okay? So... In my opinion, now, at least, and going to that whole melt-up situation, you still have a lot of things in place for the potential melt-up. The problem with the melt-up is where will it take place, right? That's, that's the ultimate question. It's easy to throw the word melt-up around, but you can very easily own the wrong things, and the market can possibly melt up, and you don't benefit one bit. So I think that's the tricky part here um, in, you know, what's going to carry the market higher? Uh, is it a little bit of both? And that's what a lot of us are hoping for, you know? Yeah, today, like you, it was pretty evident. You saw yesterday um, some decent action in the financials while they were selling tech throughout the day. Uh, and then today, you know, it was predominantly energy and uh, banks uh, on, on the call side, flow-wise, right? And then you had sweeper activity in FAS, right? Remember, they were all over TQQ for weeks, right? So we may see that, we may see that start to change, um, and we may see that higher rate theme start to outperform, Okay. What, what I really think though, guys, and you know, I hate to make predictions because I like to see, I like to see it happening in real time to confirm what I, what, I, what I feel, if that makes any sense, okay? But what I think this opens up, I think the little selling that we're seeing in tech, especially if we see any more over the short term, I think it opens up a little more participation where we get a little participation across the board. So in other words, you may not get speculative tech that performs well, but you know, some of the healthier, profitable, you know, blue chip type names, they can also push higher certain times as the market pushes higher. Yeah, exactly. And you know why I, I think that, okay? And I really don't think it's going to be one of those everything rallies where you can throw a dart at, at everything, even the more speculative stuff, okay? But what we're seeing is we're starting to see signs of institutions stepping into this market, okay? And when you think about it, like when institutions are taking positions, right, they want, they're building positions in the goods, the real companies out there, right? They're not looking 
down the scale at the more speculative stuff. You know, if they're going to play the anybody in the EV space, they're going they're going to look at a leader, right? They're not going to go down the scale and look for any two dollar stock uh, that they can't buy anyway. So I think with institutions starting to put some money to work back in equities again, where they haven't been, okay. I, I think we're going to see some of the, the better names out there, the, the quality names uh, perform. That's all. And I, I'm not talking about just a flight to quality where they, they crowd in certain names. I just think you're going to see from across the board, right, from industrials to energy to banks to even tech, I think you're going to start to see broader participation, but some of the, the more fundamentally sound names do well, if that makes any sense. You know? So that's, that's my impression. Again, with this market, it can change in a week. Um, but I think what we've seen so far, if, if you wanted to be bullish, what we've seen these past few days, you know, a little bit of weakness and some cracking in uh, NASDAQ stuff, I, I think is more of a good thing than a bad thing. You know, uh, hedge funds, their hedge funds did some buying last week. Like I'll give you an example, according to, let's go back there so we can look at some of that stuff. As a, as a whole, hedge funds haven't been net buyers, uh, but supposedly, you know, some of the more crowded names is where they were forced to chase. All right. Uh, so let's see here what you got. And that's another thing. The, they're, they're not all in to where you can see much selling here outside of tech. I just don't see it. Hold on. Where is all the rest of it? Oh, I attached it down here. Hold on. All right. So this is individual names. Okay. And this is basically the whole can of worms down here. So you had buybacks, once again, dominate, okay? You had hedge funds last week do some buying, and you had institutions who had been, they were sellers. Uh, basically, I think it was the whole month of October, finally now moving to the buy side. And you got retail who still wants no part of it. All right. So I didn't even tell you guys what I what I think is going to be the best part and the most bullish part. And I think, um, not I think, Goldman put out a note on it uh, talking about that the melt-up is still in place. And I don't think it has to lead to a melt-up, but I think it keeps a bid in the market. And what I mean is, come the new year, you're, going to, you're likely going to have some huge inflows. You know what I mean? If you remember, you guys remember, what was the year of the melt-up? That melt up in, was that 2018 or 2017? 2017, right? Where we melted up into January? 2017, right? Okay. I don't know if you guys remember, but what happened was one of the catalysts for the melt up was because January, you probably heard the term the January effect. They were front running huge inflows coming into the market, okay? So you had this crazy move, right? Strong move through December into January. And then once we started to see those inflows come in, it was almost like a sell, sell the news, right? So I think we're set up for something really similar to that. And by that time, you possibly will have more they can reel in more fish that can add to possibly be a catalyst on the downside. You know, I don't think, I don't think you have for the entire market. I don't think you have enough juice right now to take the, to take the stocks lower. I think there's just, there's too much money ready to buy right now. Like kind of like 15 billion a day or 50 billion a day, right? Whatever that is, you know? So it's just, it's, it's, oh, it's difficult, guys. 
It's difficult. And think of this too, okay? And I know I get thrown into the perma bull camp, okay? But trust me, I agree with you guys. Even being bullish is it's not that easy in this market. Because like Dan and I were talking before we got started. You can't just be like, oh, uh, stocks are going to go higher. You got to have an idea of where, what. You know what I mean? Like you could be totally wrong, right? You lean towards tech or you lean towards the banks and you can be completely wrong as they have been. So it's not as easy. I told you guys this when this rally started. Don't think a melt-up is any easier than a healthy rally because it's not. The healthier the rally, the better. Melt-ups aren't easy. Uh, so on that note, uh, I, I, what I think is for, for us to really get a correction, it would have to be really quick. You know, you're going to have to have that some sort of exogenous catalyst, you know, can it be rates pushing higher? I don't, I don't know, because then they'll just buy the shit out of banks, right? And commodities and yeah, you may get some selling in tech that got overheated, very possible, right? Especially on uh, the growthier side of tech, like some of those names that really got hot, right? The snow, the use and all that, you can see some downside, but then, you know, I said I see money coming right in and buying those things up. Yeah, the SEs. These things have been going up in a straight line for, I mean, it feels like a gazillion years, right? Net, 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 D dogs. So you can definitely see corrections there. We already, right? We talked about this Sunday. As crazy as it sounds, I think, right? We were talking about this Sunday. It's hysterical. We're in somewhat of a melt-up slash correction as ridiculous as it sounds right you think guys you guys think i'm crazy or you agree right it's a melt up but there's a correction under the hood as well that's how crazy this market is this market is right so you know you i hate to put labels because again the word melt up can get people junked up and um, excited and sloppy, and you really can't you really can't get sloppy because it will cost you money. It will definitely cost you money. Um, yeah, maybe maybe if the fangs sold off, you would probably get a little more weakness than we're seeing. I don't know if it would take the whole market south. I really don't. I could be wrong, but I, I really don't. I just again, there's there's too much money that's not completely in this market that would look at it as an opportunity, you know? Like, what if they, if they come, if they really get hard, hit hard, like a, a weak stretch, you don't think money just will step in and buy the shit out of it? You know, the problem is if there's no money to buy it, right? If players are in, but I mean, if players are all in, but that's, that's not the case. Temporarily, yeah, temporarily. Um, but I don't know, like, look, look at these names, right? Let's break it down. Cause it's easy to, to throw again, labels on everything, right? You got Facebook here that, you know, it's, if anything, I think there's been a healthy shakeout in Facebook rather than players tripping over themselves to own it. Right. You know, um, Netflix has had a healthy run. That was out of favor for so long. Amazon. I mean, Amazon hasn't done shit. No, Amazon hasn't done shit. Apple's been healthy. I wouldn't call it crazy. You know, you got names like Microsoft and stuff like that that are have are a little over their skis. Yeah, those names, right? These names could use a wash. I just, I don't know. I don't see it. I maybe. And that's what I see. I see more of like a methodical consolidation, Frank. You know, that's what I see. Dead money. That's what I see. They can go down for a short period of time and then they can go dead. Now, let's talk about what's sour as all hell out there in this market and stinks, right? You got some of the more speculative names from small cap biotech 
to Kathy Wood names that have really been out of favor, right? You got, you know, solid names like a PayPal that can't catch a bid, okay? And ultimately, it may be an opportunity, but you hear the word melt up and you look at this chart and you're saying, what the, f you know, right? Exactly. If you own PayPal, you're frustrated. Even if you bought it recently, you're frustrated and not near the highs. You know, so, and PayPal was a leader, right? PayPal was a leader. And lo and behold, you were in a melt up and this stock can't get out of its own way. You know, so it, it's it's not what you think. It's not, it's not as easy as you think when you, when you got melt ups like that. But look, you have this, right? You got these Kathy names that can't catch a bid. Okay, they're rolling over again. You have... Uh, biotechs, right? The smaller ones that already have been beaten up. Okay, they're selling again. Now these these may all find bottoms here, because you know, I mean, these things have they haven't been rallying; they've been dead. Um, what's a little more concerning? You got players talking about you got high yield starting to roll roll over. Okay, you know that's not usually a good sign when you see that. You want that to end uh, sooner than later, right? LQD, we've been seeing some put by. Okay, so I don't know exactly what, what this is all about. Is this rates related? What's going on here? Or is this the Fed getting out of the market because the Fed rigged the market, basically? That's got to be it, right? Combination of both? Yep. Yep. So I, for me personally, guys, and I know it, a lot of times it's not what you guys want to hear. This, for me, is not a market to try to get too cute. And what I mean by too cute, the more information you can get. So in other words, like if you take this market right now on a day-to-day -day basis, you can, you can have a feel and get a gauge of what's going on. But for you to place a bet on what's going to happen two, three months from now, the way things are right now, boy, you're asking a lot. You're asking a lot because things can change so drastically in a week's time, you know? And, and this is something we spoke about recently, okay? Like here, okay? You got a name like this, okay? That's catching some bottom fishing. Okay, with time. And it's so easy for any of, us, any of us to say, you know what, I'm gonna buy it. Okay, it's catching a falling knife and I have time, so I don't worry about it. But as soon as that shit turns sour, you start worrying about it, right? No matter how much time you got, you don't wanna be underwater. But my point being is the risk in a name like this that we usually, usually don't have because the whole market looks somewhat like this, is that you're buying PayPal already beaten up, but you also have a big part of NASDAQ that's gone parabolic, okay? If they start selling the hot names, right? The hot NASDAQ names, if the NASDAQ goes into some sort of little pullback and washout, what's gonna happen to PayPal? Or what's going to happen to any other tech NASDAQ name that's already been selling? Right. Now, they may outperform, right? They may not go down as much as some of the crazy names out there. That's a possibility. But, you know, you're, it's really tricky. It's, it's really tricky because a chart like this is misleading, right? You say to yourself, oh, it's already sold off. It's already oversold. But when you have the overall market that it's in, right, or sector that it's in, um, that has a chance of seeing selling, you know, you run into some selling that you, you're not anticipating. So that was the tough part with, with these names, you know, because everybody assumed I would love these names because they were already washed out. But the group, right? And, and this is what I mean, okay? 
and I, you know, it's FinTech, what, what sector you put it in, God knows. But what do I do with the thing? Why can't I navigate easily? Why it's always a problem for me? Where'd the sector chart go, damn it? Hold on, okay? I don't need to show you guys. We just looked at it, all right? So you, but when I'm so making the point, you got a name like PayPal or Snap or Pins or Twitter or any of these names, okay? That have already caught a nice beating, but you're buying into hot sentiment as far as the group is concerned, right? Yeah, and they're, Presley makes such a great point. They're crowded. These names have, people have been buying PayPal for how long? You know how much, you talk about hedge fund positioning, you know, hedge funds have been crowding into names like PayPal for, for years. So even though they're down on a relative basis recently, you know, if this is hot and the group needs to be sold, you're asking a lot for PayPal uh, to buck higher, okay? And if you remember Sunday, I made the example of what happened to me. PayPal court action that makes the recent flow look like pikers, okay? Back in 2018, I think it was, okay? Catching missiles with time. But the market as a whole, okay? Not just the NASDAQ, the whole entire market sentiment was cooked, okay? But PayPal already had pulled back a decent, a decent um, percentage off the highs. Okay, so what I did is I decided to start early and build a position in PayPal. And boy, oof, it ended up panning out because I had a, enough time and I decided to piece in throughout the correction. But if I could do it all over again, I would have been, I would have waited and stayed patient uh, and waited to sentiment cooled off um, at that time in the market because it was so much pain. It was so much pain, you know, and just not even pain, just the thought that, all right, you know, the, it may not go down today, but it wasn't going up anywhere. You understand? So I'm, I'm sitting in a position that wasn't going to benefit at all, it felt like, but I can walk in tomorrow morning and the NASDAQ futures can be getting hit again. And this thing is going to be lower. So I felt like it was a losing proposition over the short term. And if you're okay with that, that's, you know, that's one thing. But, you know, it's, it's not a comfortable position to be in. All right. So that's, that's the tricky part of, of what's going on out there right now. You know, that's the tricky part. And that's why I mentioned recently, um, even in last night's flow notes that I posted that night, you want to try... We got a little more weakness today, so that helps. But you want to try to lean towards financials, energy, industrials. Look for tactical opportunities there first. And, and then, you know, take it day by day to see how this, this tech thing shakes out. You know, it could be short-lived. It really could. Could be short-lived. But... You want to you want to be patient and give it time and look towards the favorable sentiment as opposed to looking for opportunities in sentiment that you know is hot, even if stocks got hit harder than most of the others. Does that make sense? Yeah, industrials. Here, here's the thing, right? So you got industrials here. Okay, and this is more like the XLI, right? But on a positioning basis, you got industrials that look a little more favorable. Again, because they're cyclical, you know? Um, oh, wait. Okay, so like look down here. You know what I mean? So, and, and it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that they're gonna catch flow. 
you know, because they're set up sediment wise, doesn't mean they're going to catch flow. But the advantage you have here is that the name you're looking at is likely sellers have already taken course. You know, they already did what they had to do um, over the short term and the group has as well. You know, yeah, you listen, there's no shortage of names out there that have decent setups. Okay. There, there's no shortage of it. We just, you want to make sure if you're not convinced, you know, and then you're trading off mostly sweeper activity like I am, um, you want to see buying, real buying come in. You know, you want to see real buying come in. You know what caught me by surprise? Like, look at this sector, right? This is the, I didn't even realize these things were getting beat up. Um, cybersecurity, wasn't this the hottest thing since sliced bread? You know? Yeah. So, you know, look, like there's, you know, this is the point I was making earlier. You got some damage here in some of these things, you know? You got some damage here. So as we see um, overall sentiment improve, you're going to have a lot of things set up already that I think are going to find buyers. You know, for trades, even just for trades. I'm not talking about marrying them. You know, because even my, listen, here, here's my like bullish, even my most bullish scenario, okay? We're going to need to see a correction. That's in inevitable. I know you guys probably think, well, what the, he's probably out of his bird, but because more stocks only go up. But we're going to have to see a correction. For me, if it doesn't happen, if it's not going to happen now, okay, it's likely going to happen early next year. You know? One or the other. Again, I'm not talking about a crash. I'm not talking about the end of a bull market, you know, because honestly, I don't, I don't necessarily see that in sentiment or positioning. I really don't. I just, just a normal correction that you're supposed to get every three to six months, but because the market's been rigged, we haven't got it. No? Okay, so if we get if we get this melt up like Goldman's talking about, okay, which I I can see that I can see a complete melt up into early next year. I really could. A melt up would be a la nineteen ninety nine, Dan. Uh, in other words, front running the. Uh, January flows. So it would be from now till let's call it first couple of weeks of January. That type of thing. You know, but you, you, you know, some names will probably make your head spin. Yeah. And I, I think the, like the indices is where you, you really will feel it. You know what I mean? Just going up every day type of thing. Kind of like we, what we've been seeing there, just a continuation, right? Like we were talking about um, a week ago, you know, that sort of thing. You know, and there's going to be, there, there are going to be uh, names that we can make a, a lot of money in, without a doubt. The problem is trying to predict those names ahead of time. That's, that's the tricky part. August 2020, when was that? August? I can't remember the years anymore. August 2020 to September. Was that election? Before the election? Wait, 2020? Oh, Jesus, last year. Not, my God. What year are we in? 2021? I don't, I don't know what year we're in anymore. I really, you guys are laughing. I have no idea. These weeks go by, I have no idea what the what, what goes on anymore. So let, let's see. Because like 2020, you're talking, 
Yeah, I mean, these all look like melt-ups to me. You know, kind of like this 2017-ish. You know, kind of like that. That's kind of, you know, if you put a gun to my head. So if we like melt it up, right? We would be right here right now. And then this happens. And by this point here, you're going to have more than enough of the ingredients to get some sort of correction. This is what I'm talking about, guys. What year is this? Yeah, this is what I was talking about. Okay, I get my years screwed up, but what are you gonna do? This is what I was talking about, okay? So what happened was we were here, okay? And you could see we were stretched and sort of just chopped around a little bit here, okay? All right, we started to roll over a little, but a bucket, a bucket, like a bucket's a lot. Tons, a ton of buying and fresh money came in. Front running flows that were gonna come in at the, at the new year in January, okay? And then what happened, we started to see the big flows come in and that was it, as it usually is. You know? So that's, that's what I think the odds of seeing are higher than usual right now, if that makes any sense. Right? And you know me. I, I try not to be outlandish predicting this market you know, out further than a day, especially these days, is nearly impossible, you know? But I just, based off the stuff that I see, right? Sentiment-wise, positioning-wise, you have, in my opinion, a higher probability of something like this. And I don't, you know, I, I think there are legitimate reasons for it. That's, that's the scary part. Like, I know you guys think I'm nuts. You got major brokerage firms out there calling for crashes, corrections. You name it. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have what you usually have when the music stops. In 2000, everybody and their mother, okay, was raising their target prices on everything across the board, across the board, okay? Because you look like an idiot if you were bearish. I don't think the bears look like idiots yet because they're still doing it. They're, Frank, you see the Goldman Sachs positioning? Like, you know, it's not, it's not there, Frank. You know what I mean? That's not exuberance, zero. It's literally zero, okay? I show you guys, right? Maybe that's a fluke. We look at the Bova positioning every week. We keep tabs on it every week, every single week, all right? Every week. Here's how they're positioned as a whole. You see this, okay? Now, this goes back to, I got deja vu. When we were talking at the time when it was time to buy tech, okay? I don't know if you, got, if you guys remember that moment or whatever. Everybody, right, we sat, you had commodities up here, uh, financials up here, you had energy up here. Down here, you remember? You had tech, growth, okay? You had no bulls to be fed. Nobody positioned for a NASDAQ rally in tech and growth, nothing. For good reason, okay? They, they looked like crap at the time. And you had people jamming down your earlobes, eardrums every day, do not buy tech and growth. Bad, bad, bad. Rates are going up, no good. Don't be an idiot, right? Inflation, 
right? Remember Goldman putting out those duration posts? We started looking at them for two weeks, then everybody and their mother had them. They were only buy stocks that met, quote unquote, the duration basket. Right? So nobody was positioned for something different happening. Okay. And now what you have is you have everybody aware of inflation. Okay. Again, I'm not saying not for good reason, right? For good reason. Okay. You got everyone positioned for inflation. Okay. You got everyone suspicious of the market. Okay. Even the bulls that claim they're bullish don't are scared to own anything. You know, so if something happens to go right, okay, if something happens to go right unexpectedly, you're going to get an extreme reaction to it. That, that, that's what happens, okay? And it, the problem is it happens so quick. You know what I mean? It happens so quick. Unfortunately, it doesn't last as long as we would like it. This rotation into NASDAQ and growth lasted long because even as it was happening, no one believed in it, right? We called them stubborn. They refused to buy any of the growth stocks, even though they were looking more constructive. Okay, I'm just giving you the example of that, right? Because I'm not saying it's a similar situation, but I, what I'm saying is I'm making the comparison that you do not have players positioned for a bullish environment, for risk on, okay? You had speculators, right? Rolling the dice in weeklies, right? In EV stocks, in shit like that, in story stocks, okay? All in literally one or two weeks out. That's how far they went. All right, but that's peanuts. You know, money-wise, that's peanuts. This wiped them out. You know, this wiped them out. So, you know, this, that's what I'm saying. We, you could see a little um, choppy yank, right? I mean, spy didn't even go anywhere, but and on the NASDAQ, right? You could see, you could foresee something like this happening to get the little riffraff out of the way. But I, I'm telling you, even, even from players like, for example, like Sharpie riffraff, okay? A rare, there's a rare time here we got. And again, because the market's at highs, where you have riffraff speculators in the futures market, not long. And usually the hedgers take the other side of that. But with the market at new highs, they're not on the other side of that. And they're both not long. You know what I mean? So who do you have? Who's long? CTAs? Who, who's long right now? Yeah, yeah. And I do think like an everything rally would really hurt the most. I really do. And I'm not talking about everything that the, the garbage names. I'm not, you know what I mean? I think that's a good thing that's what, what's going on now that a lot of the unprofitable, no revenue names, stuff like that um, is, you know, getting hit harder than some of the quality out there. Cause it, it, it shouldn't be like that. You know, that's usually at the end, if that. Tom Lee, well, and, and like, for example, Tom Lee, right? He gets labeled permable constantly, okay? He's, and I think he's smart. If I was in his position, I'd do exactly what he does. Why would I be bearish, right? You get paid to be right. Why would you make bear calls 
if you're in Tom Lee's predicament. I'd go on CNBC and be more outlandish on the bull side than the time I was on the prior to that. No? Okay. Now, even him, who he's quote unquote been right, he's been bullish, but he hasn't been in the right stuff. Not exactly. The stuff he was telling you to buy lost money. Well, not recently, Speed. You know, not recently. I mean, the more, look at here. The market's been melting up and energy, forget it. You'd be talking to yourself if you owned energy. And everybody did. Uh, the epicenter stocks, look at the, exactly, look at the airlines, okay? Or the cruise lines. Look at these things. Can you imagine? Look at this. Epicenter stocks. So it goes to show you how difficult, even being bullish, it's difficult. You know, so you... My point is you're not going to get, you're going to get more people to be bearish than bullish when, when that happens. You know, because it, it, for good reason, it doesn't look healthy, okay? But if that turns, right? And now you get this melt up that's a lot more broad and more participation, you know, you're going to get, you're going to get money throwing itself at this market, throwing itself. Yeah, Ani, honestly, I've been that way for, for quite a while now, only because I just can't, you know, nothing really stands out to me long enough to be any longer than tactical. You know what I mean? Go any further out than tactical. And I'll be honest with you, anything that I, I was supposed to be tactical on that I held to try to get a little more for, it cost me money. You know, so I didn't even really, I didn't even get lucky on the stuff that I would give a longer leash to. Um, even as the market, you know, even as look, I mean, look at some of the stocks you guys played, right? Roblox, TTD, these things, the EV names, you know, ridiculous. But and and what I mean by by tactical, because it gets you know you could throw it around almost as an excuse to be bullish, right? You lean bullish, okay? So you're looking for opportunities off weakness to be bullish. See, for me, it's it's almost like a given, okay? That's me being bearish when I'm tactical, right? I'm not playing the short side. It's not even a thought in my mind of playing the short side in a rigged market like this, right? It's not even, it's not even there. The brain doesn't even go there. You know, but when I, when I tell you guys about, you know, the, the, the place to be right now, the more conservative, smarter place to be is tactical. What I mean is you lean bullish off intraday fades if you're playing intraday. If you a short term swing trader off pullbacks, all right. So those of you who are members, you get an anti VIX bullish signal like we got today. You try to find something to get long. You know, you get um, a tactical uh, sentiment signal, right? We haven't had one in a bit since because this rally's gone on a straight line, right? But if we get one, you look for something to play long. So that's 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 what I mean by that. You know, it doesn't mean get sloppy and, and chase and you know be smart. But we got to lean bullish until we start to see the things we look at um, look different. They just you know another thing is VIX guys. Okay. Like, you know, the chart we just looked at, the VIX explosion, that's what followed, right? You had everybody short the VIX, okay? Everybody was short the VIX prior to that here, okay? They, see this here? They were shorting the living urine out of the VIX through this. 
off every pot. They thought it was free money. Okay, that helps set up this. You know, you don't have that right now. You don't have that. You do not have that. So from my experience, when you don't have that offside positioning, you get this, right? Every pop gets bears riled up, they come right back down. Yeah, you get Sharpies usually accumulating this. They're not even bullish speed and they're not accumulating this. You know, so you just, you don't have uh, the ingredients. What Frank was talking about what was this. Yeah. Zero. You got the guy we've been following that Zero Hedge has been writing about, Rubner, right? Who uh, in charge of the flows over there, right? That, that's his job. Who's basically, he's calling for a melt up because of the money that's coming, that's got to come into the market to buy, right? And you got clients at Goldman, they got gots on Ghoul. Right? Again, as we spoke about, when you had that mean craze where I was already, the bunker was all set up for me back here, uh, here, right? Right? Yeah, fine. Okay. Well, that's concerning. You know, but you know, this here, again, not to say the market can't pull back, but where where are the sellers gonna come from? You need, you know, you need you need that black swan. It's possible, but you need, you know, you need China to come after us. You need you need something. And the odds of that, you know, but everybody who looks at those exogenous events and black swan events, they never look at the other side of it. You know, they never look at the positive that may play out. Like what happens, you know, God forbid, right? It's, it's a lock. What happens if inflation happens to be transitory? You know? What happens if we're in a low rate environment? You know, what happens if instead of war with China, Biden makes buddy buddies and no tariffs, gets rid of all the shit, and now we're chummy chummy, everything's beautiful. What happens? Yeah, of course. All the all the bullish is always priced in, you know what I mean? According to them. No, we didn't do that. Remember, we was supposedly that was going to happen. Of course, when they're talking about it, it doesn't happen. All right now, we got beef with China again, worse than Trump supposedly. But I think Kalanovich was talking about that today. You know, no one's talking about if they figure things out and you know, threat of Taiwan's off the table or whatever, and 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 stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. They're not paying attention to... Uh, no, Sharpies aren't... They're hedged. But what's funny about that is the specs don't own uh, futures either. You know? Nobody owns anything. That's, that's, I think, the takeaway. Okay? It's not like... Even, even hedge funds, right? Okay, because that's what we got to remind ourselves. It's not like everybody's short, right? Because everybody either thinks you're long or you're short. That's not what it is. Okay. It's not that everybody's short. Okay. It's just that, that everybody's not as long as they're making you think they are. 
Okay. Look at hedge funds. Okay, they're not short yet, but are they long? You know what I mean? Like, what happens if this market does what we were talking about? The odds have gone up a bit, right? What happens if this market does push higher, right? Front running those Jan flows and you got broader participation. What, what are they going to do? What do these guys do? You know what I mean? What, what are they going to do? Are they going to decide to short it? That'd be beautiful, you know? But what, what are they going to do? You know, it's usually what they, what they always do. Look, see here? Okay? They try to get cute and stay with no exposure as the market continued to rally. And then they had to go all in. You know what I mean? And they stayed pretty long throughout until they got flushed. <clears throat> yeah, they might end up being that short. They might end up being that short, you know? It's very possible they're, they're that close to it. They're that close to it. So, you know, like I said, this is not a bullish signal yet, right? Like when they're short, but, you know, this, when you have a market that does this and you have these guys here, as well as everything else we're seeing, like I said, it raises the odds and the probability of the market getting away from them. You know, and the way to play it, okay, is in my opinion, not to get too comfortable in anything. And that's what kind of like what Ani's saying, right? Okay, you see that financials and energy or the industrials are the place that's more favorable now, right? Because tech might be a little too hot, you know, that's where you're looking now, okay? In literally a couple days, that can change, okay? A couple days. Why do I say that? It happened right in front of our eyes in energy, right in front of our eyes, okay? Look, Oh, this is not even the updated one. Where's the updated one? Oh, okay. Wasn't that long ago, right? Tom Lee loved it. Everybody and their mother loved it. Right? And then look, look how quick. Whoop. Two days ago, this is two days ago. You get a, here, 11.19, or a couple days ago. I don't know what the hell day it is today anyway. You get um Friday, okay. You get um a bullish signal. I mean, things happen quick. So that, that's why it, you know, you, you try not to get too comfortable, right? Like you, Roblox, all those names you guys knocked the cover off the ball in, right? You made your money in it. Right, lock in some gains, hold the peace. Yeah, don't get stupid now. Don't get stupid. You understand? Let let the market let it flush. Maybe it's not gonna happen today, tomorrow. Let it come in, right? Let things settle out. Who knows? We might have a tech bull signal by the end of the week. <laughs> Knowing this market. Yeah, I, I don't even know what the news, I can't even keep up with the news anymore, I'm saying. You know, it felt like literally a couple of days ago, there was a shortage of oil. That's why it was flying higher. China didn't have enough oil. I, I can't keep up with it anymore. So fast, Dan, so fast. And it's not going to slow down, man. It's not going to slow down. That's why when, and I hate to leave you on this note to spook you guys, 
But when when it's over, you know what I mean? When it's literally bear time, it's it's not gonna be fun. You know, it's gonna be like you see all these gamma squeezes and all that shit. Wait on the downside. Like I, I don't even know if the, this market could handle it. I'm being honest with you. Right? We see all these meme stocks and all this shit, Tesla, all these gamma squeezes to the upside and all that. Wait till there, 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 there aren't any buyers. Right? Wait till everybody is already in and all you have are sellers. And you have exactly you have that that gamma squeeze COVID. You see how quick COVID happened? That's what's gonna happen. I mean, we saw it, you know, it just, there was COVID and you know what I mean? Took away kind of the velocity behind the selling because there was a real life thing going on. But you saw, I mean, you saw COVID, right? Like this is what's gonna happen when you, when you don't have the buyers. And this is what everybody is afraid of on the long side. You understand? Including myself. You know, all of us. Why wouldn't you be? But this is what people are afraid of. Because I'll tell you, usually, again, I'm going to go in my, my rocking chair and my, my grandpa stories, okay? But back in the day, that's how I should start it all off, right? Back in the day, you would be, you, it was almost like you were looked like you were looked as an idiot if you tried to be preemptive, if you tried to front run anything. Okay, because you were taught to react. Right? Don't sell ahead of time into strength. You understand? Wait, see how the market looks, starts to show some signs, then you pull the plug. Right? Wait, don't buy into selling let the market test the bottom blah 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 test the low it'll come back that shit doesn't happen anymore you understand it doesn't happen anymore that playbook you throw it into the toilet bowl it's done kaput with all this shit with all these Quants and machines and programs, it's over with. These tests and you know what I mean? Right, Dan? It's it's done. So th this velocity is not going, not going away. And that's why, you know, you you have to be aware you gotta think ahead. You know, you have to, you have no choice. You have no choice. But so, you know, I just wanted to make the point for everyone who thinks I'm just a perma bull and blah, blah, blah. You know, when the time comes, it, it's going to be a disaster. It always is. It always is. You know, it always is. Yeah, now more than ever. And, you know, I, I'll tell you, for, that's something I got to continuously work on being quicker. It's so annoying. You know, it's so annoying. You guys know, those of you who play the game with me day in, day out, how many times we miss um, a, a bullish sentiment signal that we've been waiting for because it's so freaking fast. Right? You don't need me to tell you. This crude signal, like, I, we just had a sell signal, Matt. You know, I gotta, I gotta look at these things every day. I can't miss a day. Yeah, it's all, and and then everybody is aware of it. Everybody knows it's about speed, so they just look to get quicker and quicker and quicker. You know what I mean? Everyone's looking to get quicker. Everybody. But you know, glass half full, guys. It also presents opportunity. You know, for us, we can't be as quick as the machines. So don't even try to be. But what we can do is look to take advantage of the extremes that the machines create. You know what I'm saying? Yep. 
Exactly, Presley. Exactly. Exactly. 100%. I couldn't say it any better. I could not say it any better. All right, so to wrap it up and try not to confuse everybody, okay, I wish there was something out there like, you know what I mean? We can stick to a thesis, look for a certain, you know, batch of names to catch action. I, I really don't know how, you know, even if this ends up being a melt up, okay, how, what it's going to look like, okay? It could be, right, like we're seeing now, could be the financials and um, energy, stuff that's more favorable sentiment-wise lead, but I wouldn't be surprised if before you know it, tech, another day of selling. I mean, it looked like we bought them today on some of these things, right? Especially the stuff that's been destroyed. Yeah, there's, there's, there's a lot, a lot. I know it's hard to believe, but there's money on the sidelines. And the other thing is to, like I said, institutions that have been sellers, they usually are in the month of October. That's why um, seasonally October is rough. Okay, but in, seasonally they flip to the buy side institutions into the end of the year, you know? So you got in, now you got the real big boys that may be looking to put money to work. You know, so well, we, day by day, right? We look at the better, the, the best risk reward that's out there right at that point, and we try to take advantage of it. We don't, you know what I mean? Don't look to strike it rich, you know, all that stuff. You get lucky, it helps, right? Like I, like I say, because again, it was a name you guys played. The whole Roblox situation, a lot of these names, you know, it was hard to see moves like this coming. You needed to get a little lucky, but, you know, they come when you don't expect them a lot of times. Right, with earnings to screw us. All right, but there's still, there, sh there should be um, enough things to trade out there. And if there happens to be any weakness over the short term, you know what I mean? If there happens to be some weakness over the short term, I think that's even better because that's going to wash out breath. We're going to get a bullish sentiment signal. And then off of that signal, you know what happens. You get a broad rally, you know? So it'll loosen things up for us if we do get a little weakness throughout this week on, on light volume. All right, but we'll keep our eyeballs open and, you know, the signals change quick but we stay on top of them. That's all. All right, everybody. Everybody, enjoy your Thanksgiving week. Watch some football, eat some turkey. All right, happy and healthy, you and your families. And uh, I'll talk to you guys when we get back. I'll see the majority of you anyhow in the next couple of days, but for the rest of you, have a happy holiday. Have a good night, guys.